In this section, we're going to talk about waxes. Um, I feel like waxes are one of the most important parts about candle making, and it tends to be a little bit forgotten or thought of as an afterthought compared with uh, what people get really excited about, which is fragrances or colors or containers. Um, they kind of tend to think maybe certain waxes are interchangeable, uh, but in fact, waxes are one of the most important things about making a candle, and if you get really frustrated or having problems, waxes can be a contributor of that if you don't know um, how to use them or how to use them properly or how to pay attention to uh, the specific uh, pour temperatures you need to. So assuming that you know, you know, have just starting out and you haven't made any choices about, uh, you know, what type of wax you want to be, I made this handy dandy chart kind of, uh, you know, looking at uh, fragrance strength. I think one of the main reasons people make uh, their own candles is, or buy candles, is for the fragrance and they, you know, the, the fragrance as it fills up your room. And so if you don't know anything or you don't have a uh, preference of waxes coming into it uh, and you really are focused on I want to make a really great smelling candle, uh, paraffin wax is probably going to be your easiest. We're going to go through all three of them, how, you know, different types of paraffin waxes, different types of soy waxes, and then kind of beeswax or other natural waxes. But if you're just looking, talking about fragrance, what we'll call, you know, hot cold throw, and cold throw from the glossary terms, paraffin wax will be the easiest. Um, you'll be able to use the most different types of fragrances and then you'll get the most uh, intensity of the fragrance uh, hot and cold while burning the candle. Um, soy wax is also a great choice of waxes. Um, a lot of people like it because it's more natural um, whereas you know if you're looking for a more a naturally based candle uh, soy wax is a great option. We'll go through some different types of waxes but it's kind of a medium um, as far effect as far as uh, you know the fragrance and then all natural waxes are pretty bad you're gonna have to put a lot of fragrance in there um, to make it uh, smell great or you're just really gonna be unhappy with the performance of it so now looking at uh, different types of waxes we'll go through each one individually and talk about the different properties but what's so great about the internet these days is you know you can find uh, many different types of waxes online and you can learn everything you need to about their properties uh, or even people's reviews of how to use them uh, to see what the right wax is for you or might be the easiest wax for you to use. Um, so here are our friends and you know, resources at Candle Science. Um, we've got soy wax, paraffin wax, and beeswax. We'll go through uh, each of these individual, talk about you know the benefits or considerations of each of the waxes so you get comfortable uh, making a choice for which wax would be right for you, your candle company, or your consumers, which your consumers may want a you know more beeswax candle or, or more naturally made soy wax candle or just a great smelling uh, fragrance candle made out of paraffin wax. <clears throat> the first wax we're going to look at is um, paraffin wax and so let's do a quick click on paraffin wax here and uh, paraffin wax uh, is one you know it's a byproduct of oil derived stuff so that's why it's not as natural um, but it is, like I said, great for fragrances and, um, you know, it's used in canning and other things like that if you're familiar with golf waxes of the world and that type. So what's great about uh, Candle Science is they, they make it easy for you. If you really don't know a whole lot about waxes or have experience, you know, they can break it down. Well, do you want a paraffin wax for container candles, tea lights, paraffin wax for pillars, votives, um, tart candles, you know, kind of consider that the old school candles on a candlestick. Or if you want some blends of paraffin and soy, uh, which we'll talk briefly about, uh, you know, for kind of in between, you want something a little more natural, but still having decent fragrance experience. So we'll go through some of these, but the, the one that I'm going to show you how to make in the making section is going to be for container candles. Container candles, jar candles, when you think of like, you know, like the Yankee candles and the, the glass containers. That tends to be the most popular, especially for fragrances or for people's use at home. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of focus on that one for now um, and take you through some of the different wax options you can look at as you go to make your own jar or container candle. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll click on uh, that one here, paraffin waxes. And now you get another set of options of different types of waxes. Um, you've got an Astrolite wax and then two IGI blend waxes. Um, and you get different ratings and reviews, so you can go through and look at compare prices, compare reviews, and so forth. But really, if you don't know anything about waxes and you really have not, I really don't know, I just want a great smelling fragrance, I would highly recommend you start with the Comfort Blend Wax. Uh, in my experience, it's the most forgiving wax you can use. 
you will get um, a really great fragrance expression out of it, um, but it will be a little bit easier to use. The only thing about it, it is a little bit messy. You'll see what people say when you think of like a solid wax block, that is not what this is. Picture more like you know, thicker or harder Vaseline. It's a really soft wax. The softness of it does make it very easy to use. So when you pour it, um, it is more forgiving. Things will go through later about, you know, glass adhesion or having sinkholes in there. Um, the Comfort Blend Wax is a lot more forgiving in that scenario. Um, but it is a little bit messier to work with. So, you know, people tend to wear gloves with it and so forth because it is like a thicker Vaseline, whereas the Harmony Blend Wax is a harder wax. Um, we will actually show you that as we work with that in our candle making later. Um, it's a more, we think of like a block of wax that so you're going to cut out chunks or break off chunks. It's also a great wax. Um, and we'll go through some of the differences between them. Uh, it depends on what's easier or harder for you to work with. Having a harder wax like the Harmony Blend can cause some challenges uh, as far as, you know, look, watching for sinkholes or glass adhesion, or making sure you get your pore temperatures right than the Comfort Blend, but they both make great smelling candles at the end, and we'll kind of go through uh, each of the different options between them and so forth and see what uh, the differences are. Okay, let's click on the Comfort Wax Blend. And what you can see here is it's only, you know, you can get a 25 pound bag, which is great. You don't have to have a ton. You get enough to make plenty of candles, but you're not committed to buying you know, cases and cases of wax if you don't know what's the right wax for you. Uh, and now if you scroll down and look at the properties of it, this is the most important information you can get as far as how to use each wax. And I feel like a lot of people either don't look for this information or skip over it because they just say, oh, I'll just put the wax in until it melts and then I'll pour it. And I think if you do that, you're going to have a really hard time making consistently quality candles. And so we'll go through some of the most important things you need to look at from these properties. One of them is uh, the max fragrance. So how much fragrance can you actually put into a specific wax? And we'll even show you this a little bit later, but um, not every wax can hold the same amount of fragrance. Um, so you know, either it'll come out of solution or it just won't mix uh, into, the, into the candle wax. Um, so you have to know where the limit is. So in this case, this wax actually holds 12% fragrance, which is actually really high. That's a, a good amount of fragrance for the wax to hold. And one of the reasons uh, you may want to choose this wax because if you're really just concerned about uh, having a really good smelling uh, candle, this wax will allow you to put in a lot of fragrance and it will be able to hold that amount of fragrance and then you'll get a, a really great experience from it. Other key pieces of information you want to get from uh, this uh, wax is the uh, pour temperature and the melt point. In this case, the melt point is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. That tells you the temperature at which your wax will start to completely melt. So you want to make sure you get your uh, batch temperature above that. Uh, but the other one is the pour temperature. And you can see in this one, it recommends a pour temperature well above the melt temperature of 180 degrees uh, plus or minus 5 degrees C. I think uh, you know that's very important because that's work that people have done to try to tell you how to use this wax and how to get the best results out of it. And some people just, like I mentioned, ignore it and say, oh, well, I'm melted. Uh, so it must be fun to just add my fragrance and pour when the temperature might be too low or too high, in which case you're either going to get bad glass adhesion, uh, which I'll show you examples of that later, or you're going to get these sinkholes effects. Um, and all those may, you know, the sinkhole effect may cause you to have to do a two pour. Um, as you get into waxes more and start to, you know, find other custom waxes, you'll see there is a discussion between what's a one pour wax and what's a two pour wax. And what that means is there are some waxes where no matter how you pour them, you're going to get in like a little bit of sinkhole. Uh, they may you know kind of sink unevenly as it forms and cools. It'll sink unevenly, and you're going to have to remelt some more wax. And after the candle has cooled, pour some more on top of it to even it out. I know there are a lot of people who do that. Um, my personal opinion of this is you should, especially if you're starting out, you should try to find a one pour wax, one that will work really well and learn how to use it. Um, and then, you know, if you get advanced and further on and you find a wax that you really like and for some reason, whatever reason, it happens to require two pours, then you could choose to do so. But just remember that as we'll get into as we talk about scaling up, anything that you do uh, with these waxes, you're going to have to do probably a hundred times over as your business grows. So if you're willing to wait for all the hundred candles to cool, and then you gotta go back and melt and repour a little bit to even out all the candles, 
I guarantee you over time that's going to be a pain. And my personal belief is if you have to do two pours, it means either you're using the wrong wax or you don't properly know how to use the wax that you chose. So I would highly recommend that you try to stick to a find and stick to a one pour wax and learn how to use it right. And these are the most important things. And this is why, as we talk about how to make a, a candle later, knowing your temperature and monitoring it consistently is one of the most important things. Not only for safety to make sure you don't go too high in temperature, but also so you know, you know, what is my wax going to do? What temperature do I need to melt it? What temperature do I need to pour it to get the best results? And here's the information right there. It couldn't be any easier that people have done the work for you. And I can't tell you how many people just ignore that and get themselves in trouble and pour many batches and waste lots and lots of money uh, with candles that aren't very good or have sinkholes or need to be reworked because they just didn't pay attention to the properties of the wax. Now if you scroll down you can also see uh, reviews on from other people who have used the waxes and either what their experiences are, uh, what's working for them and what's not and uh, you know you can learn a lot from how other people are working which I think is great about the internet. Now let's go back and take a look at the Harmony Blend Wax. This wax is also a really good uh, paraffin wax to use. Um, you can see here it comes in a 10 pound slab, um, you know, at $1.80 a pound so you could you know play with this wax and get to uh, figure out if it's the right wax for you for under $20 uh, compared to the Comfort Blend, which you'd have to buy a minimum of 25 pounds. I think that's a great benefit of this one. Um, as I mentioned, it is a, you know, if you don't want to be get a little messy with a really soft wax uh, like the, the Vaseline type of the Comfort Blend, uh, this is also a very good wax to use as a paraffin candle um, as well if you're just looking to have a candle with really good uh, fragrance expression. Uh, the Harmony Blend is also a great choice for that as well. And you scroll down and take a look at some of the properties. We won't go in as depth as we did last time, but uh, you can see it does hold a little bit less fragrance to the other ones, and you can check out the reviews on it. Um, what's interesting is, um, you know, it being a harder wax, there is a greater opportunity to have worse glass adhesion as well as potentially some sinkholes. And you can see some reviews are great and some reviews are not so great and people saying there's things that are going on so maybe they just uh, didn't monitor their temperature properly or didn't pour at the right temperature uh, while using that wax. So we talked through the different paraffin type the waxes now let's take a look at uh, some of the soy waxes. Again uh, soy is becoming a more popular wax because it is uh, naturally derived. You can see you have options of soy for container candles and soy for pillars and votives. Um, what makes uh, you know soy wax they have many, many different types uh, you can look at and use. Um, I think from my research, what I've looked at, some of the eco soys get the best reviews, um, best results. Um, so we'll take a look at some of the eco soy waxes as well. Um, what's great about uh, you know soy waxes, not only not being naturally derived, is that they are becoming increasingly more popular because they also have skin benefits. Some people will use the wax and then will put the hot wax on their skin. And they say it's you know really good for your skin as well. So uh, you know being like a natural skin lotion and so forth, so you get the benefit of a great uh, candle with some fragrance, but also a skin lotion as well. So, but if we take a look at uh, some of the properties of the uh, you know soy waxes by scrolling down and taking a look at uh, everything else that they have in there, you can see that um, you know we won't go into as deep in all the properties. You can look them up, but. Uh, you know, it does have one of the big, biggest points of it is has a lower, not only a lower melt temperature, but a lower pour temperature. What that means is if you're really concerned about, you know, over burning waxes or being such a high temperatures, you can make soy candles at a relatively low temperature and not have to worry about that. Of course, if you monitor your, your uh, temperature very properly, uh, then it's not that bad of an issue. In fact, so, soy candles actually burn at a lower temperature um, than paraffin candles as well. Um, so now we'll take a look at uh, some of the comments that people have uh, around soy waxes. You can see it does get you know, some great reviews. Um, they are overall a little bit trickier to use uh, for fragrances. Um, you're going to have to, uh, as we talk about fragrances later, there are some fragrances that work great with soy and there are some fragrances that don't work very well with soy at all and you need to know and understand the differences uh, between those um, and then also just challenges in coloring uh, soy waxes are a little bit more difficult. Just like I mentioned overall, soy wax is great. It's a natural wax. You'll get some great candles out of it, but there are extra considerations in dealing with things you have to think about. Now let's take a look at beeswax. And this kind of goes into overall natural waxes. 
So if you're looking for, you know, a great fragrance candle, natural waxes may not be the way to go, but there may be, you know, people who want uh, some bees waxes and so forth. But you can see that the two main challenges of bees waxes and other natural waxes is one, they're way more expensive. It's about, you know, here, $8 a pound. Uh, the good news is you can order, you know, as low as one pound and figure out if this is the right wax for you. But in general, the waxes are going to cost a lot more and they're not going to be very good for fragrance. Um, they're either not going to hold a whole lot of fragrance or you're going to have to use a ton of fragrance to try to get, you know, good intensity. Or overall, you may just be really disappointed with this really expensive wax with a really poor performing fragrance for a fragrance that could work very well in either soy wax or paraffin wax. Um, but if you chose to use a natural wax, you just may not get that great fragrance experience. Okay, now let's talk about troubleshooting the waxes. So let's assume you now have a good understanding of the different types of waxes you can use and you've made your choice as to the type of wax you'd like to use. And now you're starting to make some candles and you're seeing some problems. Let's talk about um, how to address those and how you can fix them. I think this is one of the most frustrating things for people because if they start to have problems with their waxes, they get really frustrated, they're wasting lots of money, they're not getting great candles or at least candles they could sell into a business and then they get really upset and really frustrated and may give up. You can see here uh, two candles using the exact same wax. It is the paraffin harmony wax uh, if you're just keeping track of those. And on the right I poured it at perfectly the right pour temperature. On the left I intentionally poured it too cold. And you can see what the glossary terms call glass adhesion differences. The one on the right poured at the right temperature so you got a good adherence to the glass. And the one left was poured so cold that you can see these little, I call them stridations, you know, almost like barcodes on the side of the glass. You can see it's not adhering to the well, and as you're pouring the wax, you can kind of see it, it's starting to cool and solidify, touching the glass just as you go, and that's how you get that really kind of, um, you know, non-uniform surface uh, and something that's really a problem. And when you see this type of behavior, generally what it means is that you have poured the wax at too cold of a temperature and you need to, when you see this occur, obviously if you're using a wax, you know the wax, go back and look up the pour temperature and make sure that you were pouring at that temperature or just try to pour at a little warmer temperature than you were and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't fix it, then you're going to have to do some other actions, which we'll talk about in a second. But in general, when you see this type of effect of poor glass adhesion, it is generally attributed to um, you know, not the right pour temperature and generally towards too cold. You'll see lots of people, even especially talking with soy waxes, talking about you'll get better glass adhesion if you preheat your glasses or make sure they're at least not cold and so forth. I really haven't gone to the, you know, that, that far of an extent. Um, I think lots of things can be managed by the temperature of the wax at which you pour them, but I have seen or heard of people taking hair dryers to the glass containers or whatever container you might have just to try to prevent this from occurring. Um, th I think that's pretty extreme, especially as you start to scale up and have to do this for, you know, 10 or 100 uh, candles at a time. That's a lot of effort to try to maintain them. But uh, that's something that you know, if you start reading about or looking for people are, are doing or trying to say uh, to make things work, especially with soy waxes. But in this case, uh, with a paraffin wax, I think generally speaking, this type of issue can be fixed by uh, making sure you pour at the right temperature. And when you see them, it's generally mean you're at a, a too cold of a temperature. On the opposite end, if you start to see really significant sinkholes where the top of the wax you know, just kind of really forces its way in and sinks in, that generally means you're probably pouring too hot, and in which case you again got to go back and look at the wax and make sure you pour at the right temperature. But generally speaking, and you know, every wax will be slightly different, if you're seeing this poor glass adhesion or stridations, you are pouring too cold, and if you're seeing significant, significant sinkholes, you're pouring too hot. Now let's talk about what I call wax additives. Just because you've purchased a wax online doesn't mean you only can use that wax and you can't do anything with it. And so, especially if you're troubleshooting, you're having lots of trouble with the wax, you know, there are things that I like to add to the waxes to either make it a little bit softer or a little bit harder. So here's some of the ones I just use, things you can buy either off the shelf or off of Amazon, uh, mineral oil, fractionated coconut oil, 
and uh, you know petroleum jelly. So let's say you're having taken a wax and it's too hard, right? You're having too much trouble. No matter how you pour it, you're getting tons of bad glass adhesion or striations. Things you could add to it would be a little bit of mineral oil. You could either you do five, ten percent mineral oil. That'll effectively lower the melting point a little bit. In which case, it will cause the uh, you know maybe the better glass adhesion uh, while you're working with it. Or you can use Vaseline, which will also kind of make the wax a little bit softer, uh, change the crystallinity, and then uh, cause it to make it a little bit, you know, better glass adhesion. Or on the opposite end, if you ever heard of golf wax for canning, golf wax is such a hard, brittle wax that if you're really having trouble, uh, you know, in, with wax being too soft and working with it, you can add in a little bit of, uh, you know, golf wax. Probably only need a couple percent, maybe five percent at the most added to your wax and you can really take a really soft wax and really harden it up if that's easier to work with. Um, so again if you really are struggling with waxes just because you don't need to only use what you bought you can add mineral oil to it if you need to soften it because mineral oil is a very good mixture with paraffin wax specifically. If you're using soy you could try something like fractionated coconut oil. Um, soy is so easy to use and at such a low temperature that it's unlikely you would need to add anything to soy or you'd run into as many problems as you would um, maybe with a really hard uh, paraffin wax. Or again if you really just want to you know, make your candles a little bit harder. Um, maybe if you're having trouble, especially as you're thinking about in a business standpoint, if, if you're having trouble that you're shipping your candles across the country and they're starting to melt in the hot summer while shipping, you should think about adding something in there like this really hard golf wax or something that would kind of raise the melt point of your candles so that they don't melt while you're shipping them to people. You know, that way then when they receive them, there isn't wax all over the pace or they, have, they haven't lost their shape and so forth and I think uh, golf wax would be you know a good additive for paraffin waxes. I'm just trying to give you some ideas to think about that you could use for yourself. You don't have to use just the wax you got. You can add or subtract from it and I like to do that on my own. I've, I've made waxes a combination of many different things and had lots of fun with it.